Joel will probably predict that I have us losing my voice. So, you know, bear with me this morning. Turn in your Bibles, if you would, to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. We're going to begin reading in verse 14. Matthew 25, 14. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto him them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, and unto another two, and to another one. To every man according to his several ability, and straightway he took his journey. And he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that he received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received the one went and digged in the earth and hid the Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoned with them. And so he had, and so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been a faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, a good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, and reapest where thou hast not sown, and gathered while thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, Thou knowest that I reap where I sow not, and gathered where I have not straw. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give him unto the, uh, give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the blessings of the song service, of those who came this morning. Uh, may we find spiritual prosperity from the service to help us to produce in this world as we live out in the week. Thank you for all the blessings you do provide. Uh, may we learn and understand what those are and realize how much of a blessing it is to be able to serve you in spirit and in truth, to read your word, to sing together, to pray together. Uh, may we uh, understand how that helps for the future for those who, who come behind us whom we may not know uh, may you receive all the honor and glory from today's service may it be right may the praise be right the preaching and the teaching be accurate and it may be for your honor and glory in Jesus name we do pray amen now turn with me to Luke chapter 19 Luke chapter 19. I 
you hear different things about this particular parable and this this discussion, this discourse that Jesus was having with with his disciples. You know, you'll hear different things about this parable. Uh, you know, the parable that we're about to read has some similarities to the one that we just read, right? And that is the master or the lord or the or the boss is going off into a far country. He's going away for a while. He's leaving his whatever money here in this place and he's going on to another place. And that's the similarity you'll find from today's text and the text that we just read. We'll also find that as he left, he gave money in both of the texts to servants. Not to reward them, but so that they can take his money and make him more money. They had that was a job. He gave them a job to do, which is here, take this money and put it and make more money. There's a similarity. Uh, you'll find where two different two servants in both of the texts did make money with the money that the Lord, that, that master or that boss or that owner of the whatever business gave them. They did take their money that they, they were given and they did use it to make more money like they were supposed to do. And in both texts, uh, you'll find where one guy didn't. There's the similarities in the text. Uh, also, you're going to find that the big boss, the boss, the head honcho, the man, the business owner, in the parable comes back, and there is going to be a reckoning. All right? How much did you make me? You know, a boss deserves that, right? What are you doing for me? Why should I keep you on? Sort sort of a thing. Things I don't think have changed much since Jesus is days there, there is today. Don't our bosses and employers expect us to produce and do something to earn them money? That's why they hire us, right? So Jesus is going to make a parable. Or what do I call them? Comparisons or a comparable to prove or to teach a spiritual principle. He's using a, a theme of that day that we can use today, right? There's the boss. There's the things that he has for you to do. Are you productive? Or are you not? And is there going to benefit you and the company, what you have done for him? Now, could Jesus not make that same comparison today? I mean, things haven't changed much since then, right? That way? Uh, excuse me while I get a drink of water. Again. We're not going to read this whole parable through, but we're going to look at it verse by verse, all right? So we're going to put it in context. That's my favorite thing. And you know, some can put it in context better than the others. Some research and think things through and pray about things, and they have a different, you know, they could put it in a better context, but I'm going to put it in context the best I can today, right? According to the scriptures, Luke Chapter 19, can I tell y'all, verse, verse 11. We're going to see a comparable again. <clears throat> and as they heard these things, he added and spake a parable because he was nigh to Jerusalem and because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. Now then, context. Now that we have a context right there for the parable. Why did he give it? Because he was near Jerusalem and the people thought that the, his kingdom, which is the kingdom of heaven, was going to immediately appear. That the Messiah was going to come and make a kingdom here on this earth and rule the earth. And this prompts him to give this parable. This, I'll go ahead and say it right now. I don't want to get on it in a minute. People, people try to teach you that this proves that you can lose your salvation. This parable teaches that you can lose your salvation. It has nothing to do with going to heaven or hell, this parable. Nothing. Nothing to do with that. It hasn't even, that's not even in the same context. What did I just read the context was? People thought that immediately that the Messiah was going to build his kingdom. And based on that, he gives this parable. Puts that parable that we just read in a different context as well. This is the same thing. He says, some of you, or some thought that the 
kingdom of God should come immediately. So he gives a comparable. Here it is. We just read it in another account. Now we're going to read it in Luke's account. Verse 12. And he said, therefore, a certain nobleman, or put it like this, or some nobleman. Don't know anything about this nobleman. It's just a, it's just a nobleman. Think of a, you think today of a nobleman. I, I have worked for two or three companies in my life that were owned by men that I knew. Certain men, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. So this nobleman in this parable is going to go into a far country to do some more work, take care of business, and when he's done with that, he's going to come back and take care of this other business, right? It's just a parable. What's the parable about? Some thought the Lord was fixing to come back and set up his kingdom. Because of this, you get this parable. And the nobleman went away. Verse 13, we're going to see servants and citizens. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. Literally means bank trading. Go trade. You know what traders do? You know the stock market, right? World Trade Centers for all them guys are down there trading. That's what he's talking about. Occupy till I come. Take this pound and go trade it. Go make some money with it. Uh, but his citizens hated him. <laughs> citizens. And sent a message after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. I don't think this is the servants. It's the citizens. I think it's the citizens who's, I mean, the servants are going to be working among these citizens, and I think it's going to make it hard on the servants to gain pounds. I think that's what he's getting at here. The citizens made it hard on this, these guys to make money for this man. The citizens of whatever town it is. Remember, it's a parable. But what's the parable about? Why? Why? Because some thought, now is the time that we're going to receive our inheritance. So the guy goes away. He gives him a job to do. Let's read on. So he gave all of his servants pounds to trade, money to trade. By the way, if I've learned correctly, these pounds and those pallets is an immeasurable amount of money that you can't even wrap your brain around. How much money? Millions. Today, the, the talent is 200 pounds of gold in those days. How much is 200 pounds of gold worth today? Or the talent could be 100 pounds of silver. <laughs> it don't make any difference. 100 pounds of silver, 200 pounds of gold. How much is that? Today's great. Well, that's a lot. So these guys were given a lot to take care of, whether it was one pound, two pounds, one talent, two talents. So they were given a whole lot of money to, for them to go trade this nobleman. <clears throat> And then the nobleman returned. And it came to pass that when he returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him, and to whom it had been given the money, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. So how much did you, you go find those guys that I left here to take care of my business, to take that money I gave them, to go trade it at the World Trade Center, whatever. Go make me and earn and double my money. Go find those guys. I'm going to see how much they have made me. And then you're going to find the productive in verse 16. Then came the first saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained thee ten pounds. And he said unto them, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, thou hath thou authority over ten cities. Now some people take this parable right here and say, this is what, you know, if you're a child of God today and you're a good, faithful servant, then when Jesus comes back, he's going to make you ruler over many cities. No, he's given a parable. He's saying, look, this man left, and he expected while he was gone for these men to make him some money. And those that did were rewarded. Now, I will go ahead and say this. You trust in Jesus today, and you live that way, if you believe it. And you live like there's a Jesus Christ day in and day out for the rest of your life. Jesus will reward that in ways I don't think a parable could even come close to. So trust in the Lord 
And while he's gone, right, he ain't came back. You know, how long ago? 2,000 years ago, he gave this parable, right? He said, look, y'all, you're waiting on my kingdom, but I'm going to give you a parable. He says, a man went away. It's like when a man went away and, and he gave these men something to do. Now, now who, who did he give something to do? He gave the disciples something to do. What did he say? What's, what's the Great Commission? Tell me. Go ye therefore into all the world. Into all the world. Preaching the gospel. Come on. Teaching and baptizing. Baptizing. We all know what I'm talking about. So that was that was Jesus leaving. What did he say? They thought Jesus was going to stay and build the kingdom, but Jesus said, I'm leaving. That's what he's talking about. And he gave them a parable. He left and he gave those guys something to do. He didn't give them money, right? They weren't rich. But he did give them something to do, am I right? So based on that, we can know that Jesus hadn't come back and hadn't set up a kingdom. What have we learned from this also? That he is coming back. Amen. And he is, there is going to be a reckoning. Let's just go on. I don't want to go too much. Verse 17, or verse 18, the second came saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained thee five pounds. And he said likewise to him, be thou over five cities. And there's the reckoning. These servants did what they were supposed to do. But then, inevitably, what are we going to find in every job? People who don't do what they're supposed to do, am I right? And they, they expect the hand, they expect the payday, right? But they don't do what the, the boss wants them to do. They don't produce in the company, right? And that's what you're finding right here. Here's a guy. He comes along. He says, Lord, I hear is thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. For I feared thee, because thou art an austere man. Thou takest up that thou layest not down, and reapest that thou didst not sow. Lord, I did not do with that pound what you wanted me to do. I hid it, but I still have your pound. Sound familiar today? Uh, he says, I knew that you were a certain kind of person. We're going to see, I think, we're going to learn from here, that this servant just assumed the man was a certain kind of person. And then here we have the day of reckoning that came. And he saith unto him, Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knowest, or knewest, or actually assumed. That would be the better word. But if I was printing the Bible, most would say there, assumed. That I was an austere man, taking up that I laid not down, and reaping that I did not sow. He ain't, he ain't saying the man was evil. He just said, you assumed I was this way, but out of your own mouth. He says, wherefore thou gavest not my money into the bank, and that my coming I might have required mine own with usury, or with interest. He said unto them that stood by, Take from him the pound, and give it unto him that hath ten pounds. And they said unto him, Lord, that would be Lord, that would be talking about the Lord who went off and went away, the man who owned the business. They called him Lord, of course, in those days. He went and they said, He hath ten pounds. For I say unto you that unto every one which hath shall be given, but from him that hath not, even that which he hath shall be taken away from him. He says here, But those mine enemies which that would not have that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. Now not not the not the not the employees, but the, those citizens of the city. He said, Bring them and kill them. You know, you had to put your, go, to the, go to the mindset of the ancient days where they did that sort of thing. We don't do that, right? We don't even understand that here in America. He says here, those guys who wouldn't have me to rule over them, bring them and slay them before me. And when, and when he, Jesus, had thus spoken, he went before ascending up to Jerusalem. Now, I will stop right here. Not stop, but put up my paperwork problem was these men assumed that Jesus was going to set up a kingdom. Right now when he came, he didn't. He gave a parable and said, look, here's, the, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to go away, right? Jesus has he's been gone 2,000 years now, right? To prepare a place for who? For all of those who believe in Jesus Christ, who trust in him. That's a fact. That's the way it is. And while he has been gone, somebody has been taking that talent, which We're talking about money, you know, in the parable. But somebody has been taking what the Lord hath given them 
and broadcasting it and has been trading it. Now, we don't, I don't have gold. God ain't never gave me but 200 pounds of gold, has he you? But you know what he did give me? Salvation. And you know what else he gave me through this text? Is the assurance that he's coming back. Amen. That while he's gone, he ain't back yet. He had to set up a kingdom on this earth, right? But while he's gone, what am I supposed to do? I am to take my talent, my pound, what's, which would be what? I, I believe it's salvation. The word of God. Take that and broadcast it like you would see. You know, he, he uses that a lot in his parables about planting seed. You know, and here he's just talking about, you know, a guy who went away and he's going to come back. He's coming back. I think that's what Jesus is getting at, but he ain't here yet. So what do we need to do until then, bro? We need to, we need to sow and take care of that money, that pound, that salvation that he gave us freely through grace. And we need to take that and broadcast it. Tell others about Jesus. Tell others what Jesus did for you. Tell others what Jesus did for me. You tell them that this is what God will do for you. And you know what? Whenever time a person trusts in Christ as their personal Savior, you know what you have done? You have planted the seed. You have done what the Lord tells you to do. Now, if you go through life and you don't see any need in, in the gospel or presenting the gospel or teaching the gospel, you go through life that way, guess what? Jesus is going to come back. And you know what you're going to have? absolutely nothing to show for it. That's all Jesus is getting at. You want to have something to show for it? What? Your salvation? Tell somebody about the Lord through the word of God. He's coming back. That's what he was telling these guys. They, they thought he was coming now. He said, no. Here's a parable. It's like a man went away for a long time and when he came back, he gave them something to do while he was gone. Now I'm here today with something to do. What is that? To tell people about Jesus. Who? Warn the citizens. Warn the people of the world that the master's coming. Take what he has given. And then you take and give it to somebody else. He hasn't. He's coming. There will be a day of reaping. There will be a day of reckoning. How will you be found? You will be found as one who gave and traded and use what God gave you, whatever that might be, in, in grace and mercy. Right? Well, have you taken that and traded it? Have you taken that and broadcasted it? Have you taken that and used it? Are you? Just, or are we just waiting? Around? I know people like this. I know a guy who was thought the Lord was going to come back. Two thousand. What was that? What did they call that? Y two K. Remember that? Y two K years. Because I'm talking about a religious guy. Baptist. I think he was a Baptist. Well, I knew him so well. He, he just knew the Lord was going to come back so bad that he, he, he got guns and he got cupboards full of food and he just sat and he was waiting on Y2K. Y2 came and went and by the next month he died. What, 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 what did he do? He thought the Lord was going to come back. Doesn't that kind of remind you of these guys? They thought he was going to, you know, it's almost like they quit. Well, people, not, people were quitting. God's people were quitting because they thought he was coming right now to set up this kingdom. Well, that guy, that Y2 guy, thought the same thing. Didn't happen. I mean, he almost had me convinced that Jesus was going to come back Y2K. That the whole world was going into darkness. Y'all remember that? Or is it just me? Y'all remember that? The, the crazy conspiracies that went on out there in the world? Well, I got news for you. He went until he shows and the Bible says when he shows, everybody will see him. How's that? I don't know. But he's going to show, and the entire globe of people on this earth will know it. And until then, what do we need to do? Quit, buy guns, get in the military, go make war, stuff our cabins full of food. Huh? Are we going to go and continue doing the Lord's business? Which is what? We're not, maybe we, well, are we supposed to make money? No. How, are we, how can we be fruitful? We can tell people, like he said in Matthew, we can go into all the world teaching the word of God. And those that do that, those who uh, are consumed with that, and by, by the way, go to these, go to, the, go to the state meetings and these little southwest meetings, you'll see people who are consumed 
to carrying the gospel all over the world. It makes you feel good. It does your heart good to see those guys. There are people in this world like that have the energy to do it. God-given energy to do it. Thankful for those. I'm glad you're here this morning. I believe that us being here this morning will affect positively somehow, some way, somebody in the future. Maybe even after we're dead and gone. This every meet one meaning at a time. God will bless it if the meeting is for his honor and for his glory. God will bless it somehow, some way, in the future, in ways that we, I was looking at that wall of men, so it's a night, I think I saw one guy back there who's pastored in 1870-something here, right? Well, here we are today. I don't know, I don't know them guys, but here we are today. Know this, it's a good thing while, while the Lord is gone to at least meet together to pray and to sing and to learn God's word. That's on Sunday, right? And Monday is useful and productive for us to pray to God every day. It's, it's to pray for others every day. It's useful for to us every day. While we're not here, it's easy to sing praises to Jesus here. Isn't it? It's easy for us here in this congregation to get on a Get on a high and love the Lord. And I love it. And I thank God for these weekly things. But Monday through Friday or Saturday, we can continue on working. And God will bless that Monday through Saturday just like he blesses these Sundays. Somehow, some way, he'll do it. We have to believe that. We have to trust in that. Otherwise, why do we do it? We could be down here fishing on Sundays, right? We could be doing other things on Sundays. Why do we do it? Because God says he'll to do it, and I like to believe that we do it because God will advance it and make it useful and productive somehow, some way, in this terrible world that we're even living in today. Now, do you trust Jesus as your personal Savior? Has there ever come a point in your life that you agreed with God that you needed to be saved? Has there come a point where you ever thank God for that? Have you ever come to that point? Have you ever come to the point where you know you wanted to identify with the almighty God of the Bible. Have you ever come to that point? I hope today is the day. I hope today you do that. In, the, in your mind's eye, however that may work out, do you trust in Jesus? Have you learned that Jesus has went away, but he's going to come back again? Do you believe that? Let's all stand.